Hello, Dan here from howtomechatronics.com. In this video, we will take a look at my new updated version of the cycloidal drive that I made in one of my previous videos with 19 to 1 reduction ratio and see how it performs made with CNC machine parts versus made with 3D printed parts. I will explain how I designed and assembled this cycloidal drive as well as test its accuracy and load capacity driving it with both NEMA 17 and NEMA 23 stepper motors. In my previous video I already explained in details what is cycloidal drive and how it works, so I would suggest checking that video out in case you are not familiar with cycloidal drives. Real quick, a cycloidal drive is a unique type of gearbox or speed reducer which provides very high reduction ratio with a compact but robust design. A cycloidal drive is composed of 5 main components, a high speed input shaft, an eccentric bearing, two cycloidal discs, a ring gear with pins and rollers and a slow speed output shaft with pins and rollers. The input shaft drives the eccentric bearing and the eccentric bearing drives the two discs around the internal circumference of the ring gear housing. The eccentric motion makes the cycloidal disc teeth or lobes engage with the rollers of the ring gear housing in a way that they produce reverse rotation at a reduced speed. The reduction ratio depends on the number of pins on the ring gear. Again, you can find more detailed explanation in my previous video as well as see the 3D printed prototype that I made for that video. It had 15 to 1 reduction ratio with 115mm diameter. Now for this build I wanted to increase the reduction ratio but at the same time I wanted to make the cycloidal drive more compact. To achieve that, instead of using ball bearings as rollers, I will use bushings with much smaller diameter. The roller's diameter is actually the most crucial dimension because together with the number of pins they define the size of the gearbox. Let's see why so by explaining the process I used for designing the cycloidal drive. So first I defined the diameter of the rollers to be 8mm as that was the dimension of the bushings that I could easily order. Then I wanted to have 19 to 1 reduction ratio which meant that the ring housing needed to have 20 rollers. So I drew a sketch with 20 rollers with 8mm diameter around a circle. Now according to these two input parameters I was able to determine the minimum size of the ring gear pitch diameter. This value together with the eccentricity value which should be smaller than half of the roller diameter make up the four main input parameters that are used for generating the shape of the cycloidal discs. The cycloidal disc profile comes from a cycloid which is a curve traced by a point as it rolls along a straight line without slipping or actually its variation epitrochoid which is a curve traced by a point rolling on a circumference of a circle and it is at a distance from the center of the exterior circle. For drawing such a curve we can use the following parametric equations which can be found in a document written by Omar Yunis for the SOLIDWORKS education block. Now I will show you how I used these parametric equations for making the cycloidal discs using SOLIDWORKS and its equation driven curve tool. It's worth noting here that these industry leading and professional grade design tools are now globally available to makers at a remarkably low price of only $99 per year. That's right, SOLIDWORKS for makers offer is great for anyone learning the trade, making DIY projects and more. It includes 3D experience SOLIDWORKS Professional, the well-known CAD, X-Design, a browser-based CAD that runs on any device, X-Shape, a browser-based freeform easy-to-use CAD for surface modeling, Visualize Connected for photo quality images as well as NC Shop Floor Programmer, for intelligent machining strategies for 3-axis milling and wire EDM in an easy to learn and use package. So check the link in the description through which you can get this offer from SOLIDWORKS at a 20% off discount. Thanks SOLIDWORKS for being part of this channel and supporting educational content like this. Back to topic, we can easily generate the cycloidal disc shape by inserting the two parametric equations in place. Of course, we should use our parameters in the equations appropriately. As for the t parameters, we should use values from 0 to 2 pi, though we should note that we need to use a slightly smaller value than 2 pi in order the curve to be generated. 
This will generate the curve with a little gap which can be easily connected with a spline. Then we can simply extrude the profile and make holes for the eccentric bearing and the output pins. The diameter of these output holes is equal to the pin roller's diameter plus 2 times the eccentricity. In this case that's 8 plus 2 times 1 equals 10 mm diameter. Nevertheless, let's build this cycloidal drive now and see how it works in real life with both CNC machined and 3D printed parts. You can find and download the 3D model of this cycloidal drive as well as some drawings needed for manufacturing the parts and the STL files needed for 3D printing on the website article. The link is in the video description. I ordered the CNC machine parts from PCBWay, which are also the sponsor of this video. Along their PCB manufacturing services, they also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding services. Ordering the parts is super easy. We just have to upload the 3D model and select the material for the part. They have pretty much any material available. I chose aluminum for most of the parts except for the cycloidal discs which I wanted to be made out of stronger material, so I chose stainless steel for them. We also have the option to choose various surface finishes, like anodized, brushed, spray painting and so on, as well as choose surface roughness and tolerances. For those parts that I needed tighter tolerances than the standard one, I also included drawings which contain the specific tolerances that I required. We can add multiple parts and request a quote for each of them in a single order. Once I ordered the parts, they arrived within the estimated time and well packed, each item separately protected. I must say that it's quite satisfying to have something that you have designed, manufactured in metal. The parts look great and everything is exactly the same as in the design. So make sure you check the link in the video description and visit PCBWay website to learn more about their services. Thanks PCBWay for being part of this channel and supporting educational content like this. Nevertheless, for the 3D printed version, I made the parts myself using a PLA material. When 3D printing the parts, it's important to use the whole horizontal expansion feature in your slicing software. Usually the holes of the 3D printed parts are smaller than the original size, so with this feature we can compensate that and get more accurate dimensions. I set mine to 0.07 and the horizontal expansion feature, which compensates for the outer dimension of the parts, to 0.02. Of course you should do some test prints to see what values will give you the most accurate results on your 3D printer. Ok, so let's move on with assembling the cycloidal drives. Here I have all of the parts. I will start with assembling the CNC machined version first and then the 3D printed one. I started with securing the shaft coupler on the NEMA 17 stepper motor. The shaft coupler should be at a distance of 2mm from the motor front plate and we can easily secure it using two grab screws. Then we can secure the base plate to the stepper with four M3 bolts. Next, it goes the biggest part in this assembly, the ring gear roller housing. Here we need to install the rollers, which in this case are bushings with 8mm diameter and should be 20mm long. However, I couldn't find that dimension at the time of ordering, so here I am using two bushings with 10mm length. The pins on which these bushings are installed are 6mm in diameter and have a length of 30mm. The holes at the bottom of the housing are dimensioned to make tight fit with the pins so that they stay firmly in place. Therefore here we need to use some force in order to install them. So here they are 20 rollers which will give us 19 to 1 reduction ratio. The ring gear housing goes on top of the base plate and here first we need to insert a distance ring which will hold the output rollers in place. Next, we can install the eccentric shaft which goes on the NEMA 17 shaft coupler. Actually, before we install it, we need to insert the two bearings with 17mm inner and 26mm outer diameter. You see, everything fits perfectly. I set the tolerances where the bearings go to be an interference fit in order the bearings to stay firmly in place. That's why I had to use some force here in order to insert them. This assembly represents the eccentric bearing. 
Then we can install the two cycloidal discs on the eccentric bearing. These are also interference fits and we need to use some force to install them. This fit was even tighter because I ordered the cycloidal discs to be powder coated by mistake. So they had a bit more material and the tolerance was not correct. Nevertheless, we can also install a distance ring between the two cycloidal discs in order to keep them in place in case the fit between the bearing and the discs loosen up. We can then insert this assembly as a whole into the housing or one disc at a time. This fit between the cycloidal discs and the ring gear rollers is crucial as it defines how well the drive will perform. As I was trying to make this fit as tight as possible in order the drive to have minimum backlash, I encountered a problem as the discs couldn't fit. The problem was caused because I didn't make any clearance or offset to the cycloidal disc profile that I got from the parametric equations and in addition to that I ordered the disc powder coated which also increased their size. On top of that the bushings that I had were not that good and had slightly bigger diameter than 8 mm So in order to solve this problem I had to order new cycloidal discs but I actually decided to try to remove some material off of this disc that I had using a rotary tool. After some sanding I was actually able to fit the discs. Of course this is not the best solution but we will see how it will perform. Nevertheless, when inserting the two discs in the housing, they must be placed 180 degrees out of phase. There's a hole in the discs which can be used for positioning them correctly. We should flip one disc and align the two holes together. Once inserted, we can power up the motor and see how the discs work in combination with the eccentric bearing and the ring gear rollers. The cycloidal discs rotate with eccentric motion opposite to the input shaft and with 19 times slower speed. Now this eccentric motion will be transferred to the output shaft through the 6 holes in the cycloidal discs. Here's the output shaft. We need to secure 6 pins on which the bushings will go. The pins are 6mm in diameter and 20mm long. The holes on the output shaft are dimensioned to be interference fit so that they stay firmly in place when installed and therefore we need to use some force in order to install them. Once we secure the pins we can insert the 8mm bushings. Here we need 15mm long bushings but at the time of making this project I couldn't find that dimension so I used 10mm bushings but inserted some washers for compensation. I actually used just one washer instead of the two as shown in the video. However, I will include links for all of the components needed for this project with the correct dimensions. Before inserting the output shaft in place, we need to insert a distance ring and a bearing which will support both the input and the output shaft. Then we can just insert the output shaft into the cycloidal disc's hole. On the output shaft, we need to insert one more distance ring and a bearing with 35mm inner diameter. We can finally finish the assembly by inserting the housing lid on top of everything and secure it with 6 M6 bolts with 45mm length. And that's it, the cycloidal drive is now fully assembled. I really like how it turned out. Now as for the 3D printed version, we can follow the exact same procedure for assembling it. One additional step here is that we need to install some threaded inserts to the output shaft so that we can attach things to it. So now that we have the two cycloidal drives ready, it's time to put them through some tests and see how they perform. A quick note before we see the tests, the weight of the CNC machined version is considerably higher than the 3D printed one. Ok, so I will start by testing how much torque these cycloidal drives can output. Here I put the two drives side by side and I'm measuring the force they can produce at a distance of 10 cm. They both output at a force of around 45 newtons at a distance of 10 cm, which translated to torque, it's around 450 newton centimeters of torque. Though the CNC machined one was giving a little bit higher and more consistent results. On the other hand, these NEMA 17 stepper motors are rated at 28 newton centimeters, which means that we got around 16 times torque increase. That's efficiency of around 85% considering that the reduction ratio is 19 to 1 
and in ideal conditions we should get 19 times torque increase. Nevertheless, let's see how they will perform when we will attach NEMA 23 stepper motors to them. I designed this cycloidal drive so that we are able to use them with both NEMA 17 and NEMA 23 motors. However, in order to keep the design as compact as possible, the swap from NEMA 17 to NEMA 23 requires some work. We have to disassemble some of the parts and change the base plate to fit the NEMA 23 holes. We also need to use another shaft coupler as the NEMA 23 has a bigger shaft. Basically, we just need to change these two parameters and put everything back together. I changed the stepper motor to NEMA 23 on the 3D printed version as well. Here, when I disassembled the gearbox, I noticed that the cycloidal discs have already started to show some wear. We can notice that the wear is more present on one side of the discs. And I guess that's the bottom side of the parts when 3D printed. That's due to the fact that the first couple of layers when 3D printing tend to expand more. Nevertheless, here are both cycloidal drives with the biggest NEMA 23 stepper motors that I had in order to stress the drivers as much as possible. I initially started the test with the same 10cm stick that I already used, but I soon realized that I needed a longer one, as at just around 20% of the stepper motor power, I already reached 130 newtons at distance of 10 centimeters, and my force meter can measure maximum of 200 newtons. So I had to increase the distance at which I measured the force in order to stay under 200 newtons. So I attached a longer pine stick and tried to measure the force at a distance of 50 centimeters. Well, the pine stick broke at a force of around 50 newtons, as it's actually quite weak material. So I replaced it with a stronger plywood stick and I was able to measure the force at a distance of 50 centimeters. I got a reading of around 60 newtons, which translated into torque is around 3000 newton centimeters, or 30 newton meters of torque. That's pretty impressive. Just take a look how much the plywood stick bends under the load. When measuring the force at a distance of 20 centimeters, I got a reading of around 170 newtons, which is around 34 newton meters of torque. On the other hand, this NEMA 23 stepper motor is rated at 2.1 newton meters. So again, I got a torque increase of around 16 times, just like with the NEMA 17 test. Again, that's efficiency of around 85%. However, when testing the 3D printed version with the NEMA 23 stepper, I got a reading of around 65 newton meters at a distance of 20 centimeters. That's a torque of just around 13 newton meters, which is actually significantly less compared to the 34 newton meters torque that I got from the CNC machined version. So with this test, we can actually see the difference between the two versions. The 3D printed one just couldn't keep up with the forces this powerful NEMA 23 stepper motor can output. Even the threaded inserts failed under these loads. Nevertheless, I did some accuracy tests as well. We can see that the repeatability is good both with the CNC machined and the 3D printed version. However, once we apply a load, we can notice that the driver have some backlash. The CNC machined version had a better results showing around 4 mm play at a distance of around 12 cm when force applied in both directions, whereas the 3D printed version showed a play of 7 mm at a distance of around 15 cm. This play of the shaft or the backlash is present because the bushing's dimensions were not that accurate, as well as the fact that I was manually sending the disc profile because I ordered them powder coated by mistake. Because of the same reason, we can also notice how inconsistent this backlash is. Some positions on the shaft have more backlash than others. Nevertheless, we can definitely get better results if we use better bushings and have the cycloidal disc profile machined with the proper dimension and clearance. Of course, the 3D printed version precision can be also improved by printing the cycloidal drive more precisely. We can achieve that by experimenting with the horizontal expansion feature when 3D printing the parts and for better durability we can design the discs to be wider and have better contact surface. I would definitely try to implement this type of cycloidal drives in some of my future videos when making some robotics projects. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. 
Don't forget to subscribe and for more tutorials and projects visit howtomecatronics.com.